So we all know that plasma cannon heavy weapons teams don't exist, but there's a unit in the Guard Codex that fills pretty much the exact same role. Can you guess what it is? Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. So the idea for this video came about when I was writing one of my all infantry lists, just looking at the other infantry options that we have in our codex and trying to get more high damage long ranged guns onto them, which all infantry lists do struggle a bit, now we can't spam heavy weapon teams as much. Plasma cannons are a really good weapon point for point in the guard armoury. Obviously they come with the standard downsides of, of plasma trying to kill its bearer, but their damage profile point for point is really good, and I absolutely love them on my tank commander sponsons. The one infantry unit that can bear plasma cannons in the Imperial Guard armoury is the Humble Servitor, which if we're feeling creative, can be kind of employed as a sort of pseudo heavy weapon team to cram a few more nasty heavy weapons into an all infantry guard list. So if we take a look at the datasheet for the Humble Servitors now, they're an elite's choice for Codex Astra Militarum, and they're one of those units that you can include in your detachments without breaking the regimental rule and losing your regimental trait, though they themselves don't get one. Interestingly enough, you actually nominate a Forge World for them to be from, which can give them some synergy with Adeptus Mechanicus in your list. The unit size is very rigid, you get exactly four Servitors, and each Servitor is armed with a Servo Arm. Their profile is fairly unimpressive, movement 5, Weapon skill and ballistic skill 5 plus, strength and toughness 3, leadership 6, and a 4 plus save. The 4 plus save, admittedly, is quite nice. It means that if you put them in cover, then they'll be saving on a 3 plus, which is far above the norm for standard guardsmen. The servo arms give them a very small melee punch. They'll be strength 6, AP minus 2, and damage 3 for their 1 attack, though they'll be minus 1 to hit, so they'll hit on 6s normally, or 5s if they're near a tech priest. Realistically though, they're never going to be achieving any wonders in close combat, and unlike Space Marines, guards certainly aren't short of light chaff units, so they're honestly pretty useless for this role. More interestingly though, is that you can have two servitors that take heavy weapons, replacing said servo arm for either a heavy bolter, plasma cannon, or multi melter. The heavy bolter is honestly a bit underwhelming, you could just have that on a standard heavy weapon team. The multi melter is just a bit over costed at 15 points, and again, you're going to be far better with las cannons on actual heavy weapon teams. The plasma cannons are interesting though, as I do feel compared with the other heavy weapons, they are a touch under costed. Plasma cannons are only 10 points, decent ranged at 36 inches, heavy D3. And you have the standard plasma profiles, either you can keep them on non-overcharged and just eradicate some heavy infantry, or you can overcharge them where on your standard toughness 7 vehicle, they'll actually do more damage than your average last cannon shot will, which is pretty decent. They're slightly less effective against toughness 8, but still near enough on par with the last cannon. Of course, for this very good damage output, you do pay the price of having the chance to die on overcharge, but frankly, you don't really mind that all that much when it's on a 5-point model, compared with, say, a Plasma Cannon Sentinel, which I really would mind quite a lot if you lose an entire 6 wounds of vehicle from it rather than 1 wound of infantry. Now that Ballistic Skill 5 Plus is somewhat underwhelming, meaning that to make them anywhere near efficient, you do need to have a Tech Priest Engine Seer in your army as well, to be within 6 inches of them, which will improve their leadership to 9, so they won't be running away, unlike heavy weapon teams who very well might, but more importantly increase their weapon skill and ballistic skill to 4 plus. So for an interesting sort of alternative heavy weapon team with plasma cannons, you could take a small formation, three squads of servitors with two plasma cannons each, and one tech priest engine seer for 30 points. To make them shoot efficiently, entirely immune to morale under normal circumstances, he can fix up any nearby vehicles that you have to, and if the enemy gets close, then he can always charge in as a minor melee threat. He does have his nice omniscient axe, which is damaged too, and his servo arm. I think under normal circumstances, you would have to think about running three squads or none, as you can't really justify the investment in a whole tech priest just to babysit one unit of plasma cannons. So for 150 points, you'd get 12 infantry bodies, usually saving on threes if you park them in cover, letting rip with six plasma cannons on ballistic skill 4 plus per turn, plus the tech priest who can sit there repairing a nearby vehicle, or potentially just park himself on an objective to mean that you're pretty guaranteed to take that, as your opponent won't be able to shoot him due to the character targeting rules. I'm certainly not saying that there's not disadvantages to this formation. These guys aren't regiment units, so you can't order them, which is one major advantage of the heavy weapon squads to be able to get things like take aim or bring it down. And they also don't get the last guns that the heavy weapons get as well. Aside from these buffs and things that you can do for them though, I do think that point for point you're pretty much getting the same or better damage output out of these plasma cannons compared with the slightly less overwhelming heavy weapons that you can get on the standard heavy weapons teams. Their durability, I'd argue, is pretty much on a par. If we are being sensible and putting them in cover, then you're basically weighing up four bodies with a 3 plus save and one wound, 
versus three bodies with a four plus save and two wounds. Generally speaking, I think that the heavy weapons teams will be more durable against damage one weapons, but the servitors will be better against damage two or higher damage weapons. The fun doesn't quite end there though, you could think about adding some rerolls to the formation if you're feeling particularly lavish. To counteract those overcharged plasma rolls of one, you could think about having Yarrick nearby. I don't think that the servitors on their own are enough to justify his points cost, but the thing is his reroll one's aura is on a six inch radius, so with a well positioned firebase, you could potentially have him buffing these three units and maybe get four artillery tanks in the aura range as well, which is much more worthwhile. And you could very much have these as part of a firebase that uses the warlord trait old grudges as well to get reroll to wounds against one particular high threat target. If you did want to include some allied Adeptus Mechanicus, then I believe that they would have some decent synergy with these guys. If you say had an allied Admech Battalion, you could perhaps add a Tet Priest Dominus as the HQ of it, which would allow you to forego taking the Tet Priest Engine Seer in the Astra Militarum Detachment. I believe that rules as written, if you take them in the same Forge World, and even if the Servitors are in the Astra Militarum Detachment, they can still benefit from his rerolls as they are Forge World units, and he grants rerolls of 1 to hit, for any Forge World units within 6 inches of him. He also has the Tet Priest keyword, so they'll be hitting on 4s, re-rolling hits of 1, so he could sort of be the equivalent of both a Tet Priest and Yarrick for them for just 80 points. He's also really not bad just for his raw stat line, point for point. He can certainly chip into the fire support in his own right with his Eradication Array or Volkite Blaster, both of which hit on 2s, and he's pretty handy in a fight as well with that Omnisian Axe, and for an 80 point character he's exceptionally tough with a 2 plus armor save and regenerating wounds. I know if you are including an Admech detachment in the list, then you are allowed to run the servitors under their flag instead, though the plasma cannons are quite a lot more expensive at 16 points per rather than 10 points. The servitors would be able to gain the canticles of the Omnis either. So overall I thought that was just an interesting and quirky little addition that you could make to an infantry based Astra Militarum list. I don't think that it's top tier competitive by any means, but you do get quite a lot of decently ranged plasma shots for a pretty cheap points investment, and given a few turns to fire I do think that these guys will make their points back pretty quickly. They'd be pretty annoying little units to deal with when sat back in cover, as long range weapons are often going to be wanting to hunt down your tanks and artillery, rather with bothering to try and kill very cheap units of servitors that only have one wound each. Plus I think it would be very funny if your opponent does engage them with a heavy hitter to lock them up and stop them shooting, and then you roll lucky with one of the servo arm servitors and they casually backhand them with 3 damage. I know it's very unlikely, but it would be absolutely hilarious and not something that you can do with heavy weapon teams. So let me know what you think of my slightly daft idea, and please feel free to share any other quirky uses of guard units that you've come up with in the codex. We've got a lot of options, and sometimes things can fit together in slightly surprising ways. Thanks very much for listening to another Auspex Tactics video. We have plenty more 40k content coming out all the time, so feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more guard stuff. And if you'd like to support the channel, I'd just like to mention the Element Games and Amazon links that I have down in the description below. Basically, if you're thinking about buying any models in the near future, please consider clicking them before ordering either through Element Games in the UK for their discount, or Amazon in the US or Canada. Anything that you order after clicking will cost you no extra, but a small amount of the profits will go towards Auspex Tactics to help keep the channel going, so it can be a nice little way to support the channel if you were thinking about buying some miniatures anyway. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys for more videos in the future.